Bless the Lord today. We're so thankful. We're so grateful for him. We do bless his name. Well, before I begin, I just want to welcome our Facebook family and YouTube listeners to our service here today at Dove Christian Center Church. We're so glad that you're able to tune in and be able to be a part of our service. So God bless you. Thank you for your ongoing support and your love and your prayers for us. As we continue to pray for you, we ask that you continue to pray for us. Amen? Amen. All right. Let's raise our Bibles and say our confession. Amen. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer, and that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging Word of God. So my heart is alert, and my mind is receptive as I gladly receive the Word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen, amen. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you and we bless you. We honor you and we praise you. We thank you for this preaching opportunity, God, to come before your people, 
And God, I pray that the words that are given today will be life unto them. We bind every satanic force right now in the name of Jesus. And we plead the blood of Jesus to cover the ears of your hearers today. And that once we hear this word, that we will go out and we will be the doers of the word that you've called us to be. Thank you so much for loving us. Thank you so much for including us in your plan and purpose. So right now, God, I just ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, all right. Well, today I want to talk about worry. And the message today is titled, Don't Worry. You see, it's important that we understand what worry means for the believer and how it can affect us. So it's important that this cycle of worry, because it affects everyone, and many of us struggle with it, some of us more than others, but it's important that this cycle of worry is broken in our lives in order for us to be the people that God called us to be. You see, worry is a major problem today as it was in Jesus' day. In fact, one of the topics in the famous Sermon on the Mount Jesus del that de Jesus delivered to the people was on worry. Let's turn to Matthew 6, 25 and 32 in the NIV version to begin our scripture reading. You're going to have to bear with me a little bit. My iPad decided it didn't want to work today. But God is good. <laughs> All right. Matthew 6, 25 through 32. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body. What you will wear is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, of little faith? So do not worry saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows what you need, knows that you need them. Amen? So Jesus made it very clear in these passages um, that God is intimately concerned about everything he created. Jesus talked about the animals, the plants, the fields. In essence, he wants us to see this golden thread of provision that works through God's creation. But when it comes to humanity, we struggle with it. Yet birds don't worry. Why? Our Heavenly Father provides for them. They don't sow. They don't reap. They don't toil. They don't store in barns. Yet, our Heavenly Father provides for them. Jesus is helping us to understand that we actually need to learn not to worry. So the big question is, are you a worrier? Jesus says to worry is pointless. It's fruitless. And it has no value. And so you might ask the question, how practical is it with all that we face in the world today, the unknowns, the crises, 
And all the things that happen in our lives, sickness, disease, is not worrying a practical expectation of God and the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, the answer is yes. And it's because Jesus told us not to do it. So maybe we need to define some things so we can get clarity of what, what we need to understand here. We have the right to have a legitimate concern or concerns. We have a right for that. But what we don't have a right to do is to worry about them. Because worry is concern gone haywire. Now, God expects, expects us to deal in reality. If you're sick, you're sick. If you're struggling, you're struggling. And really, concerns, when we have concerns, we own them. But when there's worries, they own you. But when you're able, unable to sleep at night because of something that's going on that's causing you not to be able to sleep, that's not concern. That's worry. If a situation or circumstance that is causing you to respond physically um, like not being able to be calm or, or be able to calm down or you're sweating or you're, you're shaking, you have moved from concern to worry. And you're no longer in control. And Jesus said, stop it. Stop it. An old English definition of the word worry is to slay, to kill, or injure, by biting and shaking of the throat, like a dog or a wolf does. It means to strangle. So anytime you worry, anytime you find yourself fixated on something and you're worrying all the time, it is creating a strong stranglehold on your neck. It's almost like a wolf biting on your throat to suffocate you. And that, my friend, will suffocate the life out of you. Worrying may, be, may seem to be useless, but I am here to tell you that worrying is harmful. Solomon said in Proverbs 12, 25, in the contemporary English version, version, worry is a heavy burden, but a kind word always brings cheer. Solomon is telling us that worry is a stranglehold. It's a burden that will weigh you down constantly. In fact, there are research findings that talk about the impact of worrying. It triggers stress, hormones, it speeds up your breathing, it speeds up your heart rate, it elevates your blood pressure, and it also elevates your blood sugar levels. It can affect your appetite, and it can lead to migraine and tension headaches. Worrying makes you anxiety ridden. For some people, worrying moves them into a destructive outlet of behavior. Some look to drugs, overeating, sex, alcohol, and other means to be able to bring relief from worrying. In Luke 12, 22 through 30, Jesus gives us the account of the same message. It's one of the synoptic gospels, and in verse 25 and 26 of the contemporary English version, I want us to focus in on that. It says, can worry make you live longer? If you don't have power over small things, why worry about anything else? Jesus had one response to the do not worry, which he mentions, he really mentions it three times in Matthew, but I just covered the two, but there's still another verse that I had not covered. But he mentions it three times. And then he asks the, the question, why worry? Why worry? Your heavenly father is your provider. Jesus is breaking the problem of worrying down to this. Let's look at the last part of uh, Matthew 6, verse 30 in the NIV. And it says, you of little faith. Jesus said, you have little faith. 
He didn't say you didn't have any faith. He just said you had little faith. In other words, your faith is too small. You know, many people who believe in God still worry. But how do we measure little faith? How do you know if you have little faith? Well, if you're worrying about something that becomes a pattern of existence for you, you have little faith. It's just as simple as that. So if you have little faith, it's because you are operating with a small understanding and view of God. And really what it boils down to, and I'm just going to say it boldly, you don't trust him. Because when we grow in him, our faith will grow along with it, and the worry will shrink. But that's a process, and it's something that we all should esteem to do. How do we grow in faith? How do we create an atmosphere of faith? Well, we camp out in God's word. We got to know what God says about it. That's our first step. We must spend time in praying. We must spend time in fasting, actually dealing with our flesh. And we must lock on to God's promises. See, worry can't thrive in an atmosphere of faith. Worry can only thrive when there's fear. Because when you worry, you're actually fearful of something. You're fearful of what might happen. And you know, as our mind would carry us, when we begin to worry, we go to all kind of exaggerated states. We will go to, we'll make, an, we'll make a, a, a situation where <laughs> it could be so ridiculous. I, I think about my little, my little grandson. He knocked his, he hit his head <laughs> and he actually got, had to get stitches. But you know what? I had to calm my daughter-in-law down because she was so nervous. She, was, she had him at the hospital in surgery and everything else. I said, just calm down. But <laughs> I'm saying all that to say that worry will take us to different places. It will cause fear to just escalate beyond anything imaginable. So one of the promises that God gives us is that he's a provider. Throughout the scripture, we see it through every chapter throughout the scriptures. Jesus taught us in Luke 11, 9, Luke 11, 9, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. Job testified in Job 38, 41, that who provides food for the raven? It is young, as his young cry out to God and wander about for a lack of food. <laughs> David sang in Psalm 23 and 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Isaiah announced in Isaiah 26 and 3, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts you. Nahum prophesied in Nahum 1-7, one, one the Lord is good. He protects those who trust him in times of trouble. Paul in Philippians 4-19 says, and my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. So there's a common fact throughout the Bible our Heavenly Father is our provider. Yes, 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 yes. Knowing that God is your provider should make all the difference in the world. Yes. You see, worry is when I start meditating with my situation and start meditating, instead of meditating, meditating with my force. Let me say, source, let me say it again. Worry is when I start meditating with my situation instead of meditating with my source. When you start with your situation, you end with your situation. If you start with your source, you'll end with your source. If you start with God, you will end up with God. When you know who your father is, 
it takes you to another direction. It takes you in another direction. But if you start with worry, you'll end up with worry. If you start with shortage, you'll end up with shortage. If you start with your situation, you'll be like Elijah's servant in um, 2 Kings 6. And this story is an excellent illustration for us. The servant woke up one day and found the camp surrounded by the enemies. And he woke up the prophet Elijah, Elisha saying, Lord, what are we going to do? The servant was just panicked, okay? It's like right now. <laughs> Some of you may be thinking about situations, situations that, and saying to yourself, I'm surrounded by all kind of stuff. And my world is going upside down. And here this woman is up here talking about birds and flowers. <laughs> here I am trying to make ends meet. I got all kind of drama in my life. And things are going on. And she's sitting here talking about birds. Well, Elisha could have prayed that God would destroy the enemies that were surrounding the camp. But he didn't. He prayed something more powerful. He prayed that God would take the enemies away, not that God would take the enemies away, but that God would enable the servant to see beyond them. And that's the same for us. Our prayer should be not for God to take our problems away, but that he would enable our faith to see beyond them. So let's picture this. Here's a circle here. Okay. Now this, is, this circle is the enemy. This circle represents the enemy. This little circle here. All right? Elijah prayed, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. That he may see what? That there were more with them than was with the enemy. So let's make another circle. Okay? Uh, here's the first circle. Let's make a circle around it. All right? Now, so the first circle, if we were to relate to it, would be something like, I'm overwhelmed. I'm outnumbered. There's nothing I can do. And on the surface, that's right. That's correct. It's the truth. After Elijah prayed that prayer, the servant opened his eyes. There was another circle. A second circle that had been there all along. There was a host of angels surrounding the first circle. And on the outside was a greater, which was greater, was, it was much greater than what was on the inside. See, whatever is surrounding you, God is already surrounding it. Whatever is surrounding you. God is already surrounding it. And so, so much of our peace is dependent on whether we can perceive the second circle. See, when you live in the first circle, it's always never enough. If you start with not enough, you end with not enough. If you start with El Shaddai, who is more than enough, you will end up with more than enough. Jesus says this, if God cares for the lesser, he will take care of the greater. If he takes care of the little, he'll take care of the lot. And you are the lot. You are the lot. We can give him a hand clap of praise for that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are the lot. You are valuable to God. You are valuable to him. Let's go to Matthew 6, 33 and 34 of the NIV. I want to finish that scripture uh, passage. And it says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble 
of his own. <laughs> you see, if we first seek the kingdom and his righteousness, not your own ideas, not your own agendas, not your own opinions, Jesus said, if you start with the kingdom, God will give you the things. So many of us want to start with the things, but Jesus said, seek the kingdom first, and those things will be added unto you. One of the ways we can stop the cycle of worry is to give God all of our problems and concerns. We need to say, God, I trust you. You're my father. You're my provider. Like you provided for the men and women of old, the old times, you can provide for me. When we put God first, we prioritize his purpose in our lives. Just as any area of my life, when I start with God, I end with God. If you seek things, things over the kingdom, you'll be no different than the pagans that Jesus talked about in verse 32. And back then, pagans were people who did not know God. We can be so consumed in our everyday living that it's all about me. It's all about my spouse. It's all about my kids. It's all about my grandkids. It's all about my job. It's all about money. It's all about my career. It's all about this. It's all about that. At what point is the kingdom of God your priority? We will find ourselves experiencing worry when we are so consumed in ourselves. When was the last time you asked this question? God, what is your plan for my life? God, what is your plan for my marriage? God, what is your plan for my singleness? God, what is your plan for my children? God, what is your plan for my career? In other words, when you become focused on advancing God's kingdom, you won't have the same level of focus on your problems. God's priorities will become your priorities. And you'll find yourself experiencing such a level of peace that it's unbelievable. The only way to have God's peace is to have his priorities. We must be willing to give our concerns to God. And in regards to seeking the kingdom of God first, trusting and setting your priorities straight, I just want to mention this because it's so pivotal in my life. I want to talk about tithing and why tithing is important. You see, tithing is not some Old Testament principle. It's a principle that when you trust God, you invest your treasure in the one you trust. So when I say, God, this is my portion I set aside for you, guess what? I start my resources spinning in the direction of God's kingdom, and I can trust him to take care of all of my needs. God has been a provider for me, with, that's for me in my life since I have retired in such an immeasurable way. And it was based on a decision that I made long time ago that God, no matter what the situation is, I'm going to trust you. No matter what the situation, you will have your portion. And guess what? He has not failed me. He has been so faithful in my life. And I'm sure that there's many of you in this room who can attest to the same thing. God is faithful. Because, see, when you, it's about trust. And when you trust him, and when you train your heart to trust him, that part becomes easy. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Such a faithful father. Whew. We also realize 
something that else is that, that's very critical when we, uh, we read this scripture, that you can't predict what will happen tomorrow. And the scriptures tell us that. You have no idea what will take place tomorrow. But no matter what happens, we know that God still has our tomorrow in his hands. He has our tomorrow in, our, in his hands. So we don't have to worry about tomorrow. With all the things that are going on in this world today, and we have faced some things that have been unprecedented, we know, we have to know, that God has our tomorrow in his hands. There was a Christian author that once wrote, worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow. It empties today of its strength. In other words, stop worrying about tomorrow. The prophet Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 29 and 11 in the NIV, he says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you a hope and give you a future. Amen. So God has your future. Your family's future, your future are in his hands. And lastly, I want to say, people of God, if we're going to worry like the world worries, how are we going to win the loss for Christ? The distinction of the people of God in the day that we live in now is the supernatural peace that surrounds our lives. And with that supernatural peace, the people outside the world, the people in the world, I should say, it can be so, become so attractive and it draws attention to them to the point that they ask, who is the author of this peace that you have? Who is the giver of this peace? Who is this prince of peace of your life that you can be calm in any situation? And we can let them know his name is Jesus. And I have one last piece of good news, and it's for you if you're a warrior. You can change that warrior status to become a worshiper. You see, a worshiper is the reverse of a warrior. God bless you. God for such an awesome word and for such a timely word because I know among us in this room we worry everybody has that situation or that day or that hour or that minute where you have to stop and think I'm not going to worry about this it's a forceful thing and as she said it's a trusting thing thank you so much Elder Tut those of us that are in the body of Christ we know that we have someone we can lean and depend on and trust in and know that uh, he is the shepherd of our soul we have that but we have those that don't know Jesus and so we'd like to invite you that don't know Jesus to allow him to come into your heart and we just want to say that the Bible says as many as received him to them he gave the right to become the children of God so you have the right today to become a child of God. You have the right. You have the, the, the way that he's made for you in your life so that you don't have to worry because you have somebody that you can cast all your cares on because he promises that he will care for you. You can have that today. So if that's you, to our listening audience, if that's you, Say this prayer with me, and then the rest of this room, those in this room are going to say this prayer with you. Amen. Dear Father, I trust you, and I need you. 
come into my heart. I acknowledge my sin and I repent of my sin. And I want today to make you my Lord, to make you my new Lord and my Savior so that I will have someone at all times that I can cast my cares on forever. Thank you that you raised Jesus from the dead and on the confession of that faith, I believe it and I am saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. To all of our viewers, we thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website, dovechurch.org forward slash giving, which will take you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.